What shall I do to save my soul? Is it fate that you bear the weight? A burden on your back that you can't carry? Time to leave, a pilgrim's life to lead, to walk upon the way that leads to glory. While serving his sentence in England's Bedford prison, where he was confined for his persistent preaching of the gospel, John Bunyan penned his great literary and religious masterpiece, ranked second to the Bible as the world's best seller. In his allegory, John Bunyan portrayed a man weary, sad, and greatly burdened by reason of the heavy load of sins that he carried on his back. Oh, my dear wife and my own little ones, because of the sinfulness of this city of destruction, it will be burnt with fire, and we will be lost if means be not found to save us. What kind of nonsense is this? This religion has gone to his head. This fellow's daft. <laughs> <laughs> burdened and sick at heart, he sought escape from death and judgment, but he did not know where to go. Then it was that one named Evangelist came to help him. Evangelist did not scorn his fears, for the scroll he carried warned of coming doom. Flee from the wrath to come. Though it was difficult for the poor burdened man to see very far in front of him, he could see a light, and in that direction lay his only hope. Keep that light in your eye and go straight to it. So shall you see the gate at which when you knock it shall be told what you are to do. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go in there. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life and few are those who find it. He had scarcely left Evangelist when two pursuers, obstinate and pliable, overtook him in the way. You must come back with us. That can by no means be. You dwell in the city of destruction. There you will die and go down to a place which burns with fire. Be wise, good friends. Come with me. I seek those joys that fade not, which are laid up in a place of bliss. Read it so, if you will, in my book. Hush! Off with your book! Nay, do not scorn him. If what he says is true, the things he looks to are of more worth than ours. I mean to go with this good man. Do you know the way to the place you speak of? I am told by a man whose name is Evangelist to do my best to reach a gate that is in front of us, where I shall be told how to find the way. This book tells us of a world that has no bounds and a life that has no end. There shall be no more care or grief. The saints will greet us with love for they all walk in the sight of God. Well, my friend, glad am I to hear of these things. Come, let us mend our pace. Oh! Is this the bliss 
which you have told me about all this time? If we have such ill speed when we first set out, what may we look forward to between now and the end of our journey? How is it that no one mends this patch of ground so that those who come by may not fall into the slough? This slough is the kind of place that no one can mend. It is the spot where the scum and the filth of sin runs rampant. That is why men call it the slough of despond. When the man of sin wakes up to a sense of his own lost state, doubts and fears rise up in his soul, and all of them drain down and sink in this place. True, there are good and sound steps in the midst of the slough. At times, it is hard to see them, but the ground is good once you get into the gate. Oh, good, sir. Where do you go with such a load on your back? Sir, I must go to the wicket gate in front of me to get rid of my load. Who bade you go this way to be rid of it? His name is Evangelist. Ah. <clears throat> I am Mr. Worldly Wise Man. Hark to what I say. <laughs> there is no worse way in the world than that which he has sent you. Even in this short time, you have met with bad luck. Hear me, for I have seen more of the world than you. In the way you go, you will meet with pain, woe, thirst, the sword, too. In a word, death. Take no heed of what Evangelist tells you. In yon town, which is named Morality, there dwells a wise man, Mr. Legality, with his son, Civility. They are men of rank, who have skill to help men off with such loads as you carry on your back. Sir, which is my way to this good man's house? By that hill you must go. And the first house you come to is his. are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Again, Evangelist came to him, and Pilgrim blushed for shame, for it was with a severe countenance that he read from his scroll. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Have you drawn back your foot from the way of peace at your own cost? And are you trying to reject the Most High God? I pray that you will pay closer attention to the things that I tell you. Mr. Worldly Wise Man and his friend, Mr. Legality, are false guides. Is there hope? May I now go back and strive to reach the wicked gate? May my sin find grace. Your sin is great. Yet goodwill, the man at the gate, will let you through. For he has love of all men. But take heed that you turn neither to the right hand nor to the left. Yes? I am come from the city of destruction with a load of sin on my back. But I am on my way to Mount Zion that I may escape from the wrath to come. And as I have been told that my way is through this gate, I would know, sir, if you will let me in. With all my heart. Quickly, hurry. There lives Beelzebub. 
He and the rest that live there shoot arrows at those who come up to this gate to try and kill them before they get in. So, good pilgrim, come with me and I will teach you the way you must go. Look in front. The road is as straight as a rule can make it. But is there no turn or bend by which one who knows not the road might lose his way? My friend, there are not a few that lead down to it. Yet by this you may judge the right from the wrong. The right are straight and are by no means wide. You must now go on to the house of Mr. Interpreter. There you must knock and he will show you good things. Pilgrim was ushered to a private room. Many scenes were portrayed to him by which the great interpreter made plain the plan of God. Keep all these things in your mind that they may be a reminder as you travel and may faith guide you. And so, with precious truths revealed to his heart, he was better prepared to continue his journey. Now Pilgrim saw that his way on either side was bounded by the promise of salvation. So he ran forward, but with great difficulty because of the load on his back. He ran until he came to a piece of ground somewhat ascending, where the Son of God had come before him to bear the burden of his sin in death upon the cross. Pilgrim had many times read in his scroll of the cross where Jesus the Christ went willingly and how amid the cries of an angry mob his body was stretched and nailed thereon. And thus he bled and died. But now he saw that it was his sins that had nailed Christ there. In deep contrition, he confessed his sins to God and sought his pardon. are forgiven. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. With living hope, the newborn Christian prepared to go on to the celestial city. Soon he witnessed the folly, indifference, and presumption of three that slept. And because of his recent experience of joy and peace from pardon and sin, he was all the more anxious to awaken them out of their false security. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Go away. I want to sleep. Oh, oh, oh. 
<clears throat> Sirs, whence come you? And where do you go? I am formalist. I and my friend Hypocrisy were born in the land of vainglory and are on our way to Mount Zion for praise. The gate was too far around. The best way is to make a shortcut of it and climb the wall, as we have done. I walk by the rule of my Lord, but you walk by the rule of your own lusts. The Lord of the way will count you as thieves, and you will not be found true men. down the road of life I find that in your heart you're just a lonely one for you see upon that very road my search for good and true had its beginning you take a little turn to the left Can you see what that path has to offer you Then you gotta make it back to the main road anyhow And you have all that lost time to make up for And it's a sad thing to realize that you're all alone, that you're on your own. Again. I thank thee, Lord. In front of us there lay two beasts of prey in our path. We know not if they slept or not. We thought they'd fall on us and tear our limbs. Fear not the two wild beasts. For they are bound with chains and are put here to try the faith of those who have it and to find out those who have none. How is it you come so late? The sun is set. Alas, I fell asleep and did lose my scroll. For that did I retrace my steps. I have called discretion. If she likes what you say, she will let you in. What is your name? It is Christian, and I desire to rest here this night, for I see this place was built by the Lord of the hill. Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. I will take you to my sisters, prudence, piety, and charity. This house was built for such as you. What is it that makes you wish so much to go to Mount Zion? Why, there I hope to see him who did die on the cross, 
There, they say, is no death, and there I shall dwell with all who love the Lord. Do you have a wife and children? Yes, I have. But they would not come with me, though I did pray to God to put it in their hearts. For you may know how dear they were to me. That is Emmanuel's land. When you reach those mountains, there you will see the gates of the celestial city. Put on the full armor of God. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, and taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. May these be protection if you meet some foe in the way. I am come from the city of destruction, which is the place of all sin. I am on my way to Zion. <sighs> By this I see you are mine, for of all that land from which you come, I am prince. I am bound by vows to the king of kings. I cannot go back with you. I hate the friends and my hate is lost. I have come out to stop you. of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Beseech thee, deliver my soul. I will walk in the strength of the Lord God. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Now is Christian glad, for he had found a fellow pilgrim, faithful by name who had shared the trials of the way, and together they journeyed and talked of their escape from the city of destruction. All travelers to the celestial city must go through the town of Vanity Fair. Here was merchandise designed for every human taste. Houses, lands, positions, titles, pleasures and delights. In short, 
all pursuits, both lawful and unlawful, that can ever entice the heart from God. But these wares had no appeal to the pilgrims, for they journeyed to the city of their Lord to enjoy with him the glories of that place. What will you buy? We buy the truth. Come on. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. My Lord, this man faithful seeks to teach men what he calls faith. He says our creeds are vain. He rails at our great Prince Beelzebub. All laws and modes of life in which man heed not the word of God lead to destruction. As for the Prince of this town, men should flee from him as from the wrath to come. Only by faith in God's Son can man be saved. You see this man about whom so great an uproar has been made. Gentlemen of the jury, for the treason he has confessed, he deserves to die. Let us doom him to death. So Faithful was withdrawn from the pilgrimage. But Christian went on, not alone. For because of their testimony for the truth, there arose another, Hopeful by name, to be a companion to Christian on his journey. Together they found rest and comfort in a place of blessing. But ahead of them the way was rough, and their feet being tired from travel, they were discouraged and wished for an easier way. The way looks easier on the other side. But what if the path should lead us out of the way? That is not likely. Look, do they not both lead in the same direction? Now the way was easy, and soon they overtook another traveler, Mr. Vain Confidence, who assured them the path led to the Celestial City. But as darkness came, he was lost to their sight and soon perished in a deep pit. to force your way in here. The ground on which you lie is mine. Giant despair. Now you'll see what trespassers get in my house. <laughs> you'll stay in my dungeon until you rot away. What shall we do? My soul chooseth strangling and death rather than life. The grave would be easier for me than this dungeon of despair. My friend, remember how the Lord has kept us all along the way? Surely he will help us now. Oh, Lord, we have turned away from thee. And now despair has us in his power. We, we cannot live many more days here. Help us. Give us strength. Show us a way of escape, we pray thee. Fool that I am to lie in this dark den. Why, I have a key in my pouch, the name of which is promised, that I feel sure will turn all the locks in Doubting Castle.
escape me. I'll get you! Safely back on the King's Highway, the Pilgrims left a warning for others which read, This is the way to Doubting Castle, which is kept by Giant Despair, who loves not the King of the Celestial City, and seeks to kill all who go there. Thankful for deliverance from despair, Christian and Hopeful went straight forward until they came to the Delectable Mountains. They were encouraged by the kindly welcome received from the shepherds, knowledge, experience, watchful, and sincere. They took them upon the mountain to show them many wonders. These are they who put their trust in false guides. They are left here to warn men to take heed. Before you lies the city that you seek. Beware of flatterer, and take heed that thou sleep not on the enchanted ground. And may the Lord of the Way protect you. Ah, are you bound for the celestial city? Come with me then, for that is where I plan to go. <laughs> Why did you not follow the note in your hand instead of the false one, Flatterer, who disguised himself in bright clothing for a time? So Christian and Hopeful found they still had need of the merciful corrections of their Lord. They went carefully along the right way until they met a man named Atheist. Going to Mount Zion? <laughs> There's no such place as you dream of in all this world. <laughs> I've sought farther than you and find no more of it than I did the first day. I'm going back to the things I left behind. Mount Zion? <laughs> Next, their way led through a country where the very air made them drowsy. But Christian remembered the warning of the shepherds to beware of the enchanted ground, so their minds were quickened and their spirits roused. Then did Christian and Hopeful enter with joy into the rest and security of Beulah land. Thus far in all their pilgrimage, they had not found anything that could compare with its beauty and abundance. Although this was merely a foretaste of the glories that awaited them in the city where they were going, their hearts were filled with the gladness of this place. Zion, you must first pass through the river of death. This is a hard thing, but call to mind what the Lord hath said. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. May your faith be strong.
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. This was the sight from which I woke and looked and looked again. And though their pilgrimage was o'er, I yet was on the plain. And in the rugged wilderness, I looked and sighed in prayer. Oh God, complete my pilgrimage. Conduct me safely there.